Okay. Working. Looks good. Can you hear? Me? Can you hear me all right as well? Perfect. Okay. So we wait for a few more minutes, and mm -hmm. well, it's all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, um, welcome back. So as you see, we had a cyclic permutation of three speakers uh, today. So uh, then logical order is that we continue with Benoit Collins on, uh, okay, I think, centered Weingarten calculus and centered Wick calculus. Okay, okay. go so, ahead. Um, so hello everybody. And um, so first of all, I think I should, um, Apologize because um, I am uh, the person responsible for uh, the, sec the, the, the cyclic permutation between three speakers. So I'm very grateful for the first speaker to, to replace me on, on the, the first uh, in the last uh, in, in the last minute. And um, I actually just made a, a calculation mistake. I I withdrew. A, uh, 14 hours instead of uh, withdrawing 13 hours uh, from Kyoto, where I am right now. Um, that's the difference um, that we have in winter and not in summer, because we have no we have no summer time here. Um, and I've been playing with uh, six different uh, time zones over the last uh, two weeks, so it's not a good excuse. But anyway, I'm glad that something was worked out. Um, so okay, um, so today I would like to. So my title is about uh, centered um, VIC calculus and centered Weingarten calculus. So let me just write it down. Um, so centered VIC and centered Weingarten. And uh, actually, uh, so this is, this might be somehow a slightly niche uh, topic, but I thought it might be of, uh, of interest. There are going to be some technicalities, but I, I will try. So, so like the main segment will maybe look a bit technical somehow, but uh, uh, I think it could be of, um, of uh, it could have many uh, further uses in, um, in random matrix uh, theory. Um, and I think it'd be of, of interest to, to quite a few um, um, random matrix uh, theory uh, people here, so yeah, I'll try to I'll try to make this um, uh, um, uh, useful and and accessible. Um, so many, well, a big part of that is um, is uh, joined with uh, joint work with with Charles Bordenave. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a section of a, of my second joint paper with Charles Bordenave, but there are also some uh, ramification towards what I've been. Towards a series of projects which, which I've had with um, uh, Luca Leoni and um, and Ras Van Rao. So um, let me first um, maybe start with um, um, with Vic. So what what we are going to do, just for simplicity, for now that's that's going to be to be a, a warm up somehow, so a warm up. Um, so I'm going to take um, x1 and so on, 
uh, to be IID, uh, centered uh, normal uh, real Gaussian variables. So this is so this, these are real random uh, variables. <clears throat> and what the Vic theorem tells me is how to compute the Vic theorem, which is very classical. Um, there is a very nice proof of it in the, in the book of um, uh, Mingo and Speicher, for example, um, is that you can compute the expectation of any joint moment. So expectation of um, X I1, X I K. So you take some, some, some product so where is my mouse? So, you, so I hope my mouse is visible. If it's not, please uh, please reach out. Um, so you, you take uh, K, you, you take K, this is X I1, X I K. You will have to compute the, the expectation of the product. So here this notation is a little bit overkill because things commute. So like, you know, I could just group all the indices according to their value, but on purpose, let me write it that way. And the, the theorem says that this is actually a sum over all the pair partitions on K elements. So a pair partition on K elements is um, a partition of the set uh, of the index set one to K um, in two blocks. So of course this set is empty. If K is, uh, is odd and uh, it is not if k is is, uh, is uh, even, um, and in this case, this is uh, the number of elements is one times three times five and so on. So that is called k double factorial. Then what you have to do is you have to decide for each partition whether its contribution is going to be one or zero, and this is going to to depend on the multi-index i. So i is the multi-index i1 ik. I, this is i1 ik. Namely, it's going to be one if and only if any two indices which which are in the same which are in the same um, block uh, are the same. So maybe instead of giving a general example, let me uh, during the definition, let me just give an example. But really if I take a P to be uh, this, this partition of four elements, so one, three, and two, four, then delta I P, that's an example, this is a, a, um, Kronecker delta I1, I3, and Kronecker delta I2, I4. All right, so I hope that this, this makes things uh, sufficiently um, self explanatory. <clears throat> and uh, let me so continue on the victory. So, so this, this is very well known somehow. And now what I would like to do <clears throat> somehow is, is try to, um, to upgrade this, this formula um, to, to two cases. Uh, so actually one is going to be the centered case, but I decided after giving my, my abstract that I will do a little bit more actually. So I would like to, to explain to two cases, which is the the center case and the equivalent case. So let me take um, a notation. Notation is as follows. Maybe, okay, so let me, I'm, I'm going to, to work a lot with this formula. So let me circle it. Um, notation is this, so if X is a random variable, if, if X is a random variable, then I'm going to call X brackets. Um, the centered version of X, so it's X minus expectation of X. So just uh, since many people are into free or not deep property, in general, this is also denoted with X bubble uh, that way. Um, notation widely used by Voikulis, Kush, Paisha, and, and so on. Um, I'm going to prefer X brackets, which is not a standard notation for a reason which will be very obvious actually right away. Namely, now what I would like to do is um, compute the expectation of products not 
of Gaussian uh, variables, but of centered um, uh, monomial product of centered monomials. So namely, what I have is I have I have uh, x uh, i one. Maybe I should say i one one, and then x i one l one. So which is the first monomial which I'm going to center, and then x i two one x i two l two. And so on and so forth. So you see what I'm doing is um, I take the first monomial arbitrary of degree L1 in, uh, in my Gaussian variables and I center it. And then I repeat with a second one of, length, of, um, of degree L2 and so on and so forth. Take this product, maybe I take K of them. It's not going to, to, to matter too much, maybe. Okay, let's still let's writing. So this is X, I, K, one, X, I, K, L, K. And now I want to compute the expectation of this. <clears throat> so of course, so first of all, why do we care about this? Um, this looks a bit absurd, like why would I want to do this? The first thing is that actually, I know how to do this, right? Because, because I, I should just expand. I should just expand it and it will give me, it will give me an answer basically. So that's, that's correct, <clears throat> but Sometimes, and actually uh, quite often, if we look into applications to operator algebras or others, we would like to, to really have um, a unified understanding of, um, of this. You could also maybe potentially see some uses of this, uh, of this kind of problems. If you want to make some calculations on causes, for example, in, uh, in, uh, when you do some classical stochastic calculus, or also maybe in, um, uh, I mean, recently I uh, uh, I saw that some people who do a PD uh, care about this uh, this kind of things. So the answer is that okay, there is a um, there is a solution to this, um, which is which is either expand and compute. Uh, but again, so then you are going to get you are going to get um, two you know two to the l um, a classical weak form classical uh, two to the k sorry two to the k because I have k terms to expand each time that will be an expectation and not um, so this is going to be not very useful um, or or, and here, the interesting thing is that you actually have the very same formula as above. You have sum for P in, so what is the total length here? The total length is degree L1, degree L2, degree LK. So P belongs to P2 of L1 plus LK, which I could call L if I want, um, <clears throat> of delta, I, so I is also my, my big multi-index here, and P. So if I wrote this, this would be um, wrong, but maybe what I should just say is that um, this is actually something which also depends on um, the partition uh, pi. And the partition pi is, um, so let's, let's put it that way. Um, so this here gives me, maybe I'm going to write all this. So this is these partitions, these partitions to interval one to uh, L. So this is uh, into, into pi. So that's the first block, that's the second block and so on and so forth. So there's a, a Boolean partition here and what we have is that actually, um, uh, the contribution, oh, sorry. Uh, well, actually, I could do it that way, but I will do it slightly differently. Um, 
but I'm going to say that I'm going to, to keep this. This that's even simpler. So let me just do it that, that way. I mean, I'm already moving forward to the to Weingarten. Um, <clears throat> so here what we have is actually this is P, this is all the partition P such that. So here we have this new condition such that uh, P um, um, leaves, I will write it in, in, in English, leaves no block of the partition pi. So the partition pi, I still need it, this one here. Let me just highlight it um, alone. You see, this is um, so. What it says, maybe I should, I should just explain a little bit what what I mean here. See, I have this. Let's say I have this this partition, okay, and then I have this partition. Let's say I have k, have k people, okay, and for example, if I if I maybe I could have some some pairings inside, and here I have some pairing like this. Um, and then something like this. No. And this one actually, I'm going to refuse it. Maybe, okay, let me just do even that way. So here there's a partition, okay. And this one is going to be refused. It's going to be, it's going to be refused because um, it leaves this blocker on it. This, there is one block which does not interact with the others. So somehow, you see, it's it's like when you're when when the professor at school tells to be tells to be nice with with your friend. You should never leave a, a kid alone somehow. So this is what this is what the partition is supposed to do. You know, you don't have to connect with everybody, but nobody should be left on its own corner somehow. So. Um, for example, uh, let me just give one more example. Um, again, with, with four partitions. See, now I, I can have some pairings like this, okay? And this one will be okay, you see, because, because no, none of the four blocks is left alone. So, so it, it will interact with, uh, with somebody else somehow. So, they don't need to be completely connected. It's like here, are these these two guys and these two guys are not connected, but uh, but none of them is uh, is lonesome somehow. So that's uh, that's how the formula works. Okay. <clears throat> so I hope this makes sense. Let me know if if there is any question. So you see the interesting thing somehow already. Question? No. Okay. Um. Lots. Jamie here. So is it the condition that the pairing can uh, this pi soup the, these interval things is everything or just uh, no. every block is connected to one other block? Exactly. Every block is connected to one other block. You see for the soup here, the soup here, let me, the soup okay. here would be this partition on two blocks, right? So it's, it's not the whole thing. I see. It's like okay. no block should be left alone. Right, I see when you take your original expression with the centered things and you say that's a sum of cumulants, now you've got yeah. cumulants with products of entries, then you expand mm -hmm. that out, but then entries are Gaussian, so it's now pairings yeah. again, but there's a condition mm -hmm. that it connects the blocks. Is that exactly? That? Oh, that's how you exactly. okay, but I just okay, fine, exactly. Sorry. So, so you see, I hope that you can already appreciate this formula because, in principle, when I expand this. Where, where, where is that? Um, when I, if I, if I expand this formula with this, I should have a signed sum. It should be an, a horrible signed sum, but it turns out not to be a horrible sign, not to be a, ho a horrible thing. Actually, this is just, it's just a non-signed sum. So it's, like, it's, it's, it's actually very simple. And the proof actually is, is also very simple. You just, I mean, you just look at what it means from, from the point of view of sieves somehow. And, and this is, I mean, you prove in that that this is that this formula is the is the right one. So this is very simple, extremely simple, but uh, as we will see, um, um, very useful. All right. So um, 
let's see, I'm still hesitating. <laughs> Maybe I will do something slightly more classical. Let me let me do the, the cumulus as well. So the classical cumulus. Classical cumulus. The classical cumulus. So if I have, um, so here what I have is I have um, a partition of, um, so pi is a partition is the partition of the set one uh, one k and uh, um, uh, so um, c pi is uh, is defined in such a way that so pro is classical for everybody but for most people but let me just write it down though so that's such sum for pi prime finer than pi of c pi prime equals uh, of of so this is this is a k linear function in a random variable so x1 xk this is e pi of x1 xk where e pi x1 xk is is you take the products along each block of elements there and you take the expectation and then you take the product of the expectations along the block. So inside the blocks, you take product of variables and outside the blocks, you take the product of the expectations taken inside the blocks. Um, again, for example, what you would have, defining everything by example, you would have, for example, that if pi is the, is the, is the two block, probably if I have this, like C of um, something like this, uh, of x1, x2, x3, x4. This would be uh, expectation of x1 to x4 minus expectation x1, x2, expectation x3, x4. And here again, you could look at the very same problem as that one. So I will try to save some time with technology. Let's try to see if it works. But I want somehow right to point out the analogy between, between the formulas. So now I am looking at almost the same problem. Oh, I hope I didn't, yeah, okay, that's all right. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the same, the same thing, but instead of taking a product of centered guys out here, I'm taking a cumulant. So cumulant C N of C K, sorry, C K of these monomials. So yeah, maybe I should have said that it is, so this is probably known to many people, but I should have said maybe that that it is known that C pi is actually a product over uh, the blocks of the partition of C uh, of some function which just depends on the on the cardinal of the of each block. Um, so basically, we can define the cumulus just with um, just with a sequence indexed by integers, which is this sequence which I'm taking here. So somehow there is no loss of generality between between here and there. And so again, you see, first formula is uh, is this one. Second formula is the same, but with some some constraints. And the third formula guess what is going to be almost the same, but with a slight modification. So the third condition is going to be, the third thing here is going to be, so this is going to be the same, um, but here I just have to change my constraint such that, and that's actually answering or addressing Jamie's question, earlier question, such that P, connects everybody. So you see if you, again, I, I don't claim take, 
taking a moral point of view on the on the on the question we are taking is makes any sense mathematically, but but this is good mnemonic. It's well, it's good to remember somehow. So here we we have you know we want everybody to be connect to be friend with everybody, everybody to be connected, all blocks to be connected, and the previous case was we want nobody to be alone. So there is you know this uh, this subtlety which is uh, which is going on. So somehow this one is more demanding that that one somehow like we are getting less and less people over time. So we have these three patterns and um, right so 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 this one actually this formula is well known. This formula is, is well known it's widely used in in random matrix uh, from the point of view of free priority theory it's also highly used in uh, uh, in matrix integrals you know like behind this so this is this is actually the the, the generate so if i take all these guys to be the same uh, the ck are actually the generating coefficients of the logarithm of the fourier transform so somehow you know there is this this meme in um, in in um, theoretical field if you take a logarithm then it connects everything so this is this is basically what is meant uh, behind this uh, this uh, this saying and again, well, there is this, this intermediate um, thing here, which I which I want to mention here. So uh, again, all these are actually simple lemmas. Um, you can check them by hand with this uh, once you know Vic theorem. Um, <clears throat> and now, what I would like to do. So this one is is less is less less known, but uh, but still useful. And now, what I would like to do is to is to see what happens in the case of um, uh, of hard measures. So now, what happens? What happens in the case of hard measures? So what I'm going to do here is. Um, um, I have to make a choice, uh, and this is not very easy, but I will. Uh, so first of all, uh, well, I will take the notation that uh, that O n, this is the orthogonal group. This is the orthogonal group, which is, you know, including the n by n real matrices. I take them complex. That's just some 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 bias from the precision theory. Um, and also because I want to, to view things on the same footing with um, with UN, which is the unitary group, unitary group, uh, so which is again in the n by n matrices, <clears throat> um, and so um, both these groups um, have a left and right invariance uh, priority measure, so mu or n and mu u n, so this is the hard measure. And what I want to do, I will actually let me just focus, uh, hopefully for the sake of of um, of clarity. Let me just focus to the unitary on the on the unitary case. What I'm doing now is I'm taking a, a matrix, uh, a unitary matrix. Actually, I could say an n, an n by n matrix, but who is random and whose whose entries are u i j. Um, and whose distribution is the the hard measure uh, with respect to the unitary group? Okay. And what I would like to do is I would like to, to repeat what I've been doing there. So namely, I would like to to try to compute something like this. So what does it mean to compute something in full generality? Uh, it means well. Um, so so first of all, maybe. Maybe I should say um, what it means um, before going in fujiority. So, so typically, what I would like to be able to intuit is, is the expect. So I will I will speak in terms of expectations. So expectation of u i one j one u i k j k u bar i prime one j prime one u bar i prime k prime j prime k prime which which means you know i want to be able to compute any moment in 
into coefficients and, and their and their entries. So there is for this this Vangerton this Vangerton formula, which um, well, um, which says that so in a sense you could say it generalizes the Vick formula, uh, which is the point of view which I which is one of the point of view which I want to to promote today. Uh, so I have to first of all I have to decide if uh, I have to observe that if the number of bar of u and u bar is not the same, it's going to be zero because of the S1 invariance. And if this is the same, what I have to do is I have to sum to look at all the pairings between indices of u and indices of u bars, so which will correspond in this case to permutations, so sigma in SK. So I ask whether uh, the index I1 equals I prime sigma one. Maybe I could write it that, that way. I I prime sigma, which means somehow it's slightly what, what I had before. Is it true that I1 equals I prime sigma one, I2 equals I prime sigma two, and so on and so forth? That's my notation here. And so the I stands for the rows, and I repeat the same with the columns. So this is maybe I should say this is this is for rows. So I these are I I primes, this is the rows, and this is for columns. So J J prime. Um, so we have this um, um, J J prime tau times a function, the Vagnetti function, which depends actually on the dimension, obviously, and also on sigma tau inverse. So I'm not going to give the definition right now of the Weingarten function. I'm just going to mention though, that due to some uh, obvious, um, due to the fact that actually the use commutes, and that this actually only depends on the conjugacy class. This depends only on the conjugacy class, conjugacy gassy class of um, the permutation. <clears throat> and now what we would like to do is, see, in a sense here, I, I did something which is, um, I kind of broke the symmetry if you compare to what I did before, because, because before on purpose, I, I ignored the, the, maybe I, like here it could have been like x1, x2, x1, whatever. And of course, I could have put all the x1 in the beginning. And it, here, immediately, I, I, I took this notation. So now, what I would like to do is I would like to do the same, but, but right away, uh, stick, uh, take, this, um, take, these three, uh, take these three patterns. So, so let's, uh, let's use what? Let's use this. Um, mm, let's see. Yeah, maybe I will use this. Let's see. Okay. Now what I would like to do is the following. I want to compute. I want to compute. So there, there was no bar here, by the way. So what I what I would like to do now is the following. I would like to compute the expectation of. Um, so I have to make a few modifications here. This is not x anymore. This is r use. So we'll, I will make the modification by hand. This is this is u i one one. Um, sorry, u i one l one. That's going to be slightly not, not too tedious. I just have six modifications to make, like this, and I'm almost there. Um, so with u i k one i k l k. So here I don't have some bars. I don't have bars, so I should uh, I should uh, add uh, bars now. And the bars I will record them with epsilon. Again, also following notations by uh, Mingo, Speicher, and so on. So here we put epsilon uh, um, epsilon one one epsilon one 
epsilon 1, and so on and so forth. Epsilon 2, 1, epsilon 2, and 2, epsilon k1, epsilon k, lk, where epsilon belongs to, I could say, either empty set or bar. Okay, so this is an um, empty set means I'm looking at the U and bar means I'm looking at, at, at the conjugate. <clears throat> so if I'm just looking at the product, then this is, a, then this is done. The expectation of this means going to say that this is, a, this is done above. And now I want to do the centerings. And the um, this is done above, but I will write it though. I'm sorry, let's let's uh, so namely what this is is that this is a sum. This is a sum over um, p, which belong to p two uh, l. So l is the total the total degree, and p and I should say. Um, um, p, p and p tilde, and what I want is that um, uh, p and um, p tilde uh, match an a, a non bar with with a bar. That's, go that's going to be always the same story. And a bar. Um, <clears throat> and then I have this, you know, this delta pi, and then this delta p tilde i. And then I'm going to have um, the Weingarten function. So here I'm just going to, to, to call it. Um, P J, sorry. I, oh, yeah, I made a mistake here, sorry. Here I have a double index now. I have I11 one, one, and J11. One, one. I1 one, L1, one, J1 one, L1. One. Sorry, that's, that's getting a little bit messier. So I21 one, J21, one, I2 L2 J2 L2, and so on, so on J K1. I K one J K one. I have row and and column index. It's a J. So and so. Let me just um, fix that one as well. I K L K J K L K. All right. So I think now it's correct. <clears throat> and that's uh, that's my answer. Okay. I have the the Bangerton function here, which depends on um, on n and on here would be a little bit. Uh, will be slightly more general. P and P tilde. I mean, when it was permutation, I knew I knew that there was this like P and P tilde, but they were permutation, and, and I could just compose them. But of course, I I can be less specific as in this case, and the result is still is still correct. <clears throat> um, and now um, the the theorem is that we can repeat the very same thing. We can repeat the very same thing. Both for centering and for cumulants. So let me try to copy the whole thing. Okay. So now what we want to do, maybe I, here I can call it a um, Theorem actually. Now, what I want to do is I want to, to compute the product of centerings. And the answer is that we can do it exactly the same way, except that we need, so the condition will be exactly the same. But we just have we just have to modify the variant function, and it has to depend 
on the partition, which is the same than the one which I introduced above. So I will say in one second, so, so there, is, there is a slight difference with the, with the Vic uh, case. In the Vic case, what we had to do is we could leave out, we could leave out some, some blocks. Here we may not leave out blocks anymore. So the, the sum remains the same. However, the guy which you are summing before it was once, now it's a function which changes. And what is nice though is that the way it changes is actually extremely well understood. And that's what I would like to, to explain before finishing my parallel. So again, I have, you know, I have three things for the Vangatun case. I want to do for the big case. I want to do three things for the Vangatun case. So let's uh, let's go. Let's try to, to, to do one more copy paste. Copy. <laughs> okay. Seems to be working. Um, okay. And now, so what I'm doing here is I'm just doing some cumulants. Uh, some classical cumulants, some classical cumulants C, um, CK, because I have K things. So I have to remove the brackets. Now this is just a, a K linear form. So, and I have some, I have a comma instead here. Let me just, maybe it's, since it's a bit, I will change the color maybe. This is, there is a comma here, so then um, and then there are some more commas out there. Okay, and finally, I close my bracket, and the answer is exactly the same, except that this is yet another magnitude function. So. <laughs> um, these are three different terms, but they can be stated exactly the same way. Maybe I should give some credit. So this actually was established uh, by uh, Bordenave and uh, myself last year, or maybe two years ago. I mean, I will say a bit more, but somehow this, like this is not very difficult to prove it. What is interesting is that we can say something about that, and I'll try to say something about that. And that, well, it's difficult to give credit to that, but I would say probably I, this is something which I kind of observe somehow in, in, um, in my thesis. Um, I left it for quite a while and this has, a bit, this has actually been revisited later on by, um, by myself, uh, Jamie, Roland, Piotr, uh, uh, and later, also in the case of tensors by uh, Leoni, me, myself called Leoni and uh, Guhao. So maybe other way. And <clears throat> um, what was nice before was that we always had um, a non-signed sum. So that 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 was somehow the the you know the pitch of the of the whole thing. Somehow this was always non-signed, uh, even though in principle you see when you write cumulants you also have some minus signs around. But here this is non-signed, non-signed, and so. What I would like to explain now in the few minutes um, remaining is that somehow these Weingarten functions here are somehow non-signed um, as well. And let me actually uh, write down a formula to a theorem. So this is a, a theorem which was established by many people um, simultaneously 
I mean, not specific, but from different point of view. So, so, so Novak and Matsumoto on the one on the one hand, Matsumoto, and then I also contributed with Matsumoto. This is the combination of, of multiple papers. What we did is the following. So we, so for a sigma, a permutation in um, it's not going to be a very good notation, but anyway, the permutation of k elements. Um, <clears throat> what we are going to do is we are going to say that we are going to say that to set p sigma l to be the um, the, the solutions to the equation sigma equals the product of transposition like this. Transposition I1, J1, transposition I, L, J, L. So L is this number uh, here, okay, in this parameter, with the constraints that, so I'm always going to write this guy less than that one. So uh, I, uh, how should I write this? IP less strictly than JP. And then the, the, the guys on the, on the right, they are weakly increasing. So JP is less than JP plus one. So this is, this is in relation to the Hurwitz number. This is closely related to, to, to this is one variant of Hurwitz number, Hurwitz numbers. <clears throat> And with this, what we have is that the Weingarten function, the, the, the classical one, you see the, the one which is, uh, the one which is where, which is here, the, the, the old one somehow. The old one goes as follows. This is um, n comma sigma. This is n to the minus a sum l bigger than zero. Number of solutions, of p of the problem is p sigma l times minus n inverse to the power l. This is actually a very simple, very short, um, very neat um, formulation. We need to compute the right function. And you see, it's, it's almost signed. I mean, it's not signed because you have a minus l, you know, like if you accept negative dimensions, then this is a this is a signed uh, this is a this is a, a non-signed uh, sum. But anyway, the coefficients are interpreted as the number of solution of something. And now, uh, what is nice is that again, following my parallel between these three things, is that the same actually holds true. So now I'm able to to describe Weingarten tilde and Weingarten tilde tilde that way. Let me do it. So next theorem will be the theorem, and this one, this is, well, uh, bordenav collins bordenav uh, collins So it says that Weingarten tilde, so here I'm actually slightly cheating on purpose on the notation because um, probably self-explanatory, and, and I don't want to have heavy notation, especially during a, a talk. I mean, I, I somehow would like to make a technical thing, the, the idea of a technical thing accessible somehow. I'm going to put my partition. My partition is, is that one here, you see? Um, so the, the only thing where I'm cheating here is that I am putting a sigma here. I should actually put a p comma p tilde. But probably it's, it's kind of says if I don't know what I mean by sigma. Somehow, if, if I could label things, uh, then the p would correspond to a permutation, and then the p tilde would correspond to a permutation as well, and then I could sigma would be you know the the product of the permutation and its inverse somehow. <clears throat> and now this is um, well, uh, well, let's write it down. This is um, it's the very same thing. Here. So, OP. What? Only paste. Okay. 
But now I'm going to put, uh, let's, let's try to, to have some coherent data. We'll put some P here and some, um, oh, not enough rooms I will put in, in the index. I will have some, some pi there where P tilde, where P tilde pi sigma L is, I will just write it again in English. This is the solutions to the problem, to the problem uh, P sigma L, sorry, that leave no block of pi alone. So leave no block of pi alone is the very same thing as before. Now what it has, what it means requires a little bit of inspection somehow. The thing is what I should really be doing here uh, to make, make complete sense of, of it is, um, let me just explain all right what, what I should be doing. So what I should be doing is I should look at, at, uh, um, at the chain that I obtain between the, the identity and sigma by multiplying pointwise permutations. And see so what what and I should think of it as, as some pay rate which evolve by 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 one by moving by changing one pairing one after the other. And what I'm requiring somehow here is that for, that when I'm doing this procedure. It will. It it. Um, I just want to rule out that while doing this procedure, I I remain confined um, in, in, inside the block. So I have now I have a chain. I have a chain of pairings, and I want to avoid the pattern where there is one uh, where it's possible to restrict simultaneously all these pairings to one block. So I don't want one block to be left alone. That's, uh, that's what it means. So it's just a subset, actually. Of, so it's, um, it's the same problem, but with one more constraint, which is in the very same uh, spirit as that. And finally, finally, maybe I will, I will um, do the same. Um, yeah, maybe uh, we'll do that here. and paste. No, this result actually was written in, this is basically reformation of, of a result with, um, with Leoni and, uh, and Gurao. Um, <clears throat> it's that now if I look at uh, this, this formula, out here, W tilde tilde. Now what I have is that this is the same again, where I have a, a, a double tilde here, and this is the solution to the problem, where um, where um, where what I what I need is to connect all blocks that connects all blocks. So it's, it's again, it's the very same as before. So this thing actually, in my PhD thesis, I had already a formula with this, but it was a signed formula. This one is not signed anymore. And from this, what you can do is you can, you can obtain some asymptotics. You can obtain some asymptotics. So one which had been known for a very long time was that the Van Gerten function of um, sigma n behaves like n to the minus k, which is the number of people in the permutation, minus um, the, the, 
the telegraph length of sigma, which is the number of transpositions that you need to realize sigma, which is actually k minus the number of cycles of sigma. So if you can rewrite that, it's minus 2k plus the number of cycles of sigma. And actually, uh, and this is times this is a, a type of constant, which I mean the Mobius function, but I'm, I'm going to just to, to skip it. Um, times one plus O of n to the minus two. And what we have actually, what follows from what I wrote is that actually the Vangerton, the central Vangerton function behaves like the above, but with minus k minus sigma minus twice times the number of log. So now I have a pi out here. We have to keep to bear this in mind. Twice times the number of log sum blocks um, times again, some constant times one plus O n minus two. And, um, and finally, um, finally, W Vagarton tilde tilde, so the, the one with cumulus of pi sigma n is going to be n minus k minus sigma minus the number of blocks in the partition, minus two times the number of blocks in the partition, pi times uh, c one plus o of n minus two. So this formula was actually already known I mean, I established my thesis, but it was very heavily used by um, in the paper with uh, Jamie Roland and 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 Sniedi. So this was this was high. This was heavily used for higher order freeness, higher order of freeness, and that one. So you see, of course, the number of lonesome blocks. Uh, could be different from this. I mean, the, the, there is one comparison, you know, right? This one decays faster than that one, obviously. Um, but this one actually, and I will stop here. I will just mention this, that this here actually is used, um, used uh, together with uh, the uniform estimates, estimates. So the, so the thing is that actually this estimate is, is uniform to some extent in sigma. Uh, and by the way, all this is possible thanks to the fact that we have a non-signed sum um, to, prove, to prove what we call strong freeness, strong asymptotic freeness. A freeness uh, for random unitary tensors. So um, somehow one of the things that we had in mind initially with uh, Charles was to, was to prove that. So we know it. So, so, so there is this result by initially by Hargrove, Torbjörnsen, and then followed by Mal and myself that, that um, the operator norm uh, of non commutative polynomials in GUEs or unitary or or high unitaries, independent high unitaries, converges towards the norm of the of the free counterpart, <clears throat> and we wanted to check if the same remains true if we take not unitaries but tensors tensor copies of unitaries, and this proved to be much more difficult to um, uh, to check, but and and as it turns out, this is the kind of knowledge that we needed to prove these results. So we needed more. We needed things about non backtracking theory and all this. I'm not speaking about this um, today, but um, there was this, you know, there was this, all these nice formulas. And as a matter of fact, also a comparison between the, the unitary, like the, the, the Vagaton formula and uh, this formula uh, out, uh, out there, which were, like the fact that you know, these two had a very similar behave, behavior, which was needed somehow uh, to prove uh, to prove these results. So uh, I think my time is up basically. So I will stop here. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, do you have time for a few questions? Hi, Ben Ross, well, Jamie again. So the uh, hey. blocks are come from the tensors, is that it? So that when you take your random tensor, a unitary tensor, yeah. somehow the, those exactly. are where the blocks that you do, and you just, and where does the centering come in? How does that, why does that connect to the, how does that connect to the random tensors? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so you see what, what you are doing, for example, is if I take, let's say I take U tens U bar, Okay, with the point wise, uh, uh, entry wise conjugate. Then this is not going to be, the norm is not going to converge. And why so? It's because we have one common eigenvector. You don't want common eigenvectors if, if you, for norm convergence, because you can, you know, you can have some misbehavior of the, of the operator norm in this case. You can violate the hard loop inequality or something like this. So what we have, to, and where does this joint operator, this joint eigenvalue comes from? It comes from, the fact that the repetition tends its contradictions have a fixed point, have, have contain a copy of the uh, of the trivial repetition. So how do you get rid of this? By centering. Centering basically boils down to to computing things on the orthogonal of the fixed points. So so there is really centering, um, of course, has an important meaning in property theory, but you know, even though this is a, this is kind of elementary, we, I, I don't think it has been so much used in the theory so, so far. The fact that actually centering just means that we are looking at the orthogonal of the fixed points uh, when we take general position of the, of the group. Thanks. So I guess it's the same like in Wojcicki. You centering killed the vacuum state, right? That was where it all started back in the Fox space representation. Okay. Probably. Great, yeah. Okay. More questions from the Zoom audience, maybe. Okay. If not, we thank Benoit again for a very clear presentation, and. Um, Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Thanks, Asha. Great. Uh, okay, Gaetan, you, you are ready. Um, should we have a few minutes break? Yeah, okay. Let's do three minutes break. And uh, okay. okay.